Hi everyone, <coughs> it's steaming hot, August day 2020 and uh, it's lunchtime and I just thought I'd have a quick look at one of these repairs sent in by a, a YouTuber, says it doesn't work, it cost him a hundred quid, used it a few times and it packed up. It's interesting, look, looks like it had sticky labels over the screws that someone's taken out. Anyway, what does it do? What doesn't it do is a better question. One to six cells, lithium polyam, lithium ferrite. Lilo, I know lipo, I know lifey, lithium iron I suppose that must be, I don't know, nickel cad, nickel metal hydride, lead, charge current, up to 6 amps, dual supply, 11 to 18 volts DC, 100 volts to 240 volts AC, dual power, and of course it's intelligent, it's not really is it, not really intelligent, Oh look, there's only one rubber foot left, that's why. Let's take that one off as well and then it'll be no rubber feet left. That's better. Yeah, sorry about that, the rubber feet. This is your battery charger. So anyway, he says it doesn't work. And I said, well, I'll have a quick look just to say you throw it in the bin. And he also said he'd seen a couple like it from his friends. I guess they use them for radio control type model modeling. Yeah. So we're on lead acid charge, that's handy. So let's just stick the old, um, stick a load on it, shall we? Let's just stick a load on a, stick a load on a. Right, I'm back again, ton of spaghetti all over the bench. Yeah, what we've got on these plugs is uh, connected to the end of this test plugs. We've got the DC current constant voltage load set to 12.4 and also in parallel with that there is a Regal 12 volt DC power supply so the 12 volt DC power supply simulates the uh, battery so if I connected this now to a meter there'd be 12 volts across it and then if you try and drive it higher the current will go into the constant voltage load because at 12.4 it will start to conduct so this thing should charge it let's just check this get the old volting meter out yeah so just check it and we've got 12 volts, 12.00 actually from the Regal. So when I connect this inside of this, down here there's the connections look for the balance charging for all the different cells. It's got the connection for each cell so it can do a balance charge. You know how that works, don't you? Yeah. So anyway, let's plug this in. Right, so it's still 12 volts on the display, I can see it, so there's no short there. Let's just see if it'll charge it. So I think, so it's checking the battery. Uh, and that's what it does apparently. That's consistent with what the chappy said in the paperwork. Yeah, so it's obviously doing something, but not correct. There's no parameters to set on the battery. It either cha charges a 12 volt that acid battery or not. So let's just take it apart, shall we? <coughs> let's get into the guts over and see what's wrong with her. So I've got these two side plates here, one on that side and also here the screws that come off but the side plate's got to come off. Yeah, both of them. Yeah, I'm taking both off. Oh, that's the wrong one. So is that one. Talk amongst yourself while I'm on the right bloody screwdriver. Oh, that's loose. Pretty loosey goosey, that is. Yeah, I mean, I've done lots of um, error modeling stuff with my son, and uh, I know these chargers are shite. There's very little protection in them. And if anything goes wrong with your battery wires, um, there's curtains usually. Or, of course, unless you make a stupid mistake connecting a battery, they don't have much in the way of protection. No protection. They don't care, they'll charge you a hundred quid for another one, won't they? When you chuck this one in the bin. Yes, they will. Exciting. It's actually much cooler in my office than it is outside. It's almost 
I don't mind the heat normally, but it's almost unbearable outside. About 33 degrees or something like that. Like being on the continent. Don't mind me sitting next to a swimming pool with a nice cocktail in my hand or a beer. But out in the garden, where it's all green, full of nature, tends to make me itch a bit. Plus the wife's out there sunbathing and yeah, need to focus on what I'm supposed to be doing. Not be indulging in unnecessary fantasies, shall I say. And possibly, depending on which side of the fence, fence you're sitting, <laughs> totally inappropriate as well. So here we go, so let's take all the screws out. I decided it's best to pull all the screws out, pull out everyone you can see. Especially when I'm trying to think of something else to say. Right, so, circuit board. Oh, I see. They've got a um, unmarked, ordinary plug top power supply in there. Obviously the cheapest way of doing X factory price for that would be about $5, $4, something like that. So they're very cheap. And a membrane key bag pad that plugs into here. I'm just going to unplug that so we can get a better look at her. Right, there we are. There she blows. Not much in here, is there really? Lisa, yeah, what have we got in here? Got DC power input jack, a probably a copy of a 317 programmable linear voltage regulator, just with two resistors to plug provide power for the logic chip, which is under there. You can see the logic ICs and things are underneath the actual display. Hopefully we won't need to get into there. And then there's a three position pins here which are for the... what do they go for? They're for the temperature sensor. So you've got a safety temperature sensor which is quite neat. Not supplied with the... I can't test that because I haven't got it. And then what looks like a peeper. And this is clearly controlled by that chip there. A variable output DC to DC power converter. You know, if you were to charge six volts and you've got 18 or 12 coming in and you want to have a higher current, same power, you can't just have a linear regulator because the heat will be too much. So this is an active, I should think. Um, there's two windings on it by the look of it. I don't think it's a buck regulator. Or is it a buck regulator? Oh, lazy buggers, actually. Yeah, it's just a buck coil. So that's a buck regulator. So it is more efficient and it's a DC to DC converter. Presumably programmable by the micro to actually set the output voltage. Come along to here, that's the interface to the keypad. There's a decoupling capacitor. What's that one? And then... 2304. Amplifier comparator. Um, down this end we've got the 12 volt DC charging jacks that I just plugged into. Then a whole series of balanced charging for LiPo and LiFi and, and multi-cell batteries. And all these resistors are the sensing chains for the actual voltages for the resistors. Okay, So the micro can read back. If you've got four, four cells, cells 1, 2, 3 and 4, you have a wire here, wire plus minus here, wire plus minus here, wire plus there. And you can then check the voltage across each cell. And then when you've done the bulk charge and one cell has reached full capacity, but the others may not necessarily be fully charged, then you can start hitting the different cells that need some power with some current and just after a while bring them all up to full charge and especially with multi-cell batteries they can get out, out of balance and they'll never really properly fully charge again um, and of course if you've got one battery like say this one has got the, a lower voltage on it than it should have I, it's, it may have a slightly higher capacity than the others and you charge up as a bulk then um, if this one is lower because it can't supply the charge in the application then you're going to start providing charge to get these two terminals across all cells to the right voltage and of course this one is fully charged and this one is still charging so you end up over volting the fully charged battery so it's a way of making your cells much last much longer and also making sure that they stay healthy and, and they have got the correct charge in them and they are balanced okay so multi-cell balanced battery charger that's what it is 
and this one's the, the um, 12 volts DC so if we just have a scout around hold on there we are so you've got a close-up and personal view of her so down here we've got a I wonder what that device on the back does heat sink on it yeah there is a heat sink look uh, you can't, can't really focus it but there's a heat sink here that thing's a heat sink um, on the back of that device I wonder what that is that's a PMD45 NO3, that's a 50 volt 20 or 30 amp FET, something like that. It'll be a FET when it's turned on. It's got, you know, 20 or 30 milliohms, a low, very low impedance turned on switching FET, power control FET. And then you, oh, look. Look, 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 look. Don't need to get a meter on this one. This could be the world's most boring, shortest repair. So you've got these FETs, you've got the input here, and you've got a 500 ohm or 0.5 ohm resistor, 0.1 and 0.1. Funny, isn't it? The 500 seems all right, but the 1 ohm has blown by the look of it. Look at the crater in that thing. Anything there? Anybody conducting around here? Let's just test it. Uh, auto and so me to focus auto and that's better see all the fingerprints and the scratches yeah so ohms homage playing homage to it so the point ones 123 ohms don't think that point one's got anything in it do you 122 ohms and the 0 0.5 0 0.8 if I short the probes out on the same pad getting 0 0.3 there you go so yeah that's a good one the 5.5 ohm is a good one so I'm getting 0 0.8 if I short the probes out together I'll get 0 0.3 as well so yeah so that that's a good one blown 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 so I wonder if this um, FET that's the gate I think yeah. So gate drain source probably. So let's just put it on the peep peep mode. Diode continuity. See what we got there. Hmm. Yeah. I think that FET is just now a three-legged shorting link, don't you? And what about this thing on the back? What's this? Is this gone? That looks like it's had some soldering on it recently. Yeah, I'd say it's probably, it's not blown, not shorted. It may be blown totally open circuit, but it seems all right. So at the moment, I'm going to leave that and... So we want, is that a 1210? 2510, what size is that resistor? We'll find out in a minute. I'll go and fish up some point ones out and find a suitable FET that go in there. And let's swap them in and see if it works, shall we? <laughs> Bit of a boring uh, repair job, but let's face it, um, it is the most likely cause because someone's obviously put the battery in the wrong way around, I'd guess. There's not enough power from this power supply to blow those resistors. You'd have to have a hefty something or a a LiPo model, model aircraft battery or something plugged in the wrong way around and as these are pre-wired with plugs on it's going to be someone's bug of this I should think more than likely on balance wouldn't you say I would so um, just let me whip off to the cabinet and find out what we need to or find the components we need to put back on yeah I just consulted the cabinet of plenty and uh, yeah, I've got the right resistors. How about that? They're 2512, those big ones. They're about 6mm long and 3mm wide, all right? Yeah, so there you got it. That's that. And there's the Farnell part code. 1779460006. So they're a 1%, 1 watt, 0.1 ohm resistor. And then this one. Yep. Yeah, so it's uh, the actual part number on the device is an FDD6630A. And there's a part code for it there. MOSFET N channel 30 volts 21 amps. So that's what it is. It's one of those. 
So this, without further ado, let's stick them on. Turn the soldering iron on. There we go. I'm not going to spend an awful lot of time repairing this thing because it's only worth 20 quid or something. It's more just for the keeping it out of the landfill and helping other people if they need one. So there's the resistors look. Lovely jubbly, you're going to need two of those, aren't I? If I can get them out of the packet, that is. Kingdom for a scalpel. Right, out of the packet. Onto the board. People that watch my channel regularly will be, have no surprise that I'm going to use the Kingbo RMA218. Everyone knows things go better with Kingbo. That's a shitty unleaded solder you're dealing with. There's quite a lot of copper. I'll show you how to do it with the solder iron. I could do this without air gun, but there are other things about which might melt, like the wires. So I'm going to show you how it's done with the solder iron. To do this, you're going to need some leaded solder, 60-40, a good quality one. 60% tin, 40%. Sorry, 60% uh, tin, 40% lead, that's it. So it's not um, ROHS compliant because it's got lead in it. But we should care, but we don't really. Right, let's get it a bit closer up. And lock the focus. There we go. Ooh, yeah, it's working. So first of all, take your resistors off. Well, not resistors anymore, are they? They're just bits of broken shorting link. Now if I designed this, they'd be because they're 1% resistors, I'd have done some calibration in the microprocessor at production, but I doubt they bother with that to be honest. Okay, there we are, lovely. <coughs> Stick the new part back on. do is make sure these all flow together so that the thing sits down on the heatsink pad otherwise it will be sitting up so we're just going to make it sit down now by reflowing everything up at the same time if you're doing this by solder iron so there she is that's that one done and then we're gonna do this one is my head in the way no surely not Put new ones back on ideally so what's the betting boy do you think this is going to be the fastest fix in history or do you think there's going to be something else wrong with this i'm almost ashamed to put this on my channel but if you're a more technical type i do apologize but we are more interested in keeping these things out of landfill so it's here but i wonder if i ought to do an easy channel and a hard channel but who knows? I don't know. That's the trouble with modern living, isn't it? It's difficult to do the right thing when there are so many choices. Can't keep everybody happy. Right, so I'm just going to put a bit of this on. Watch this, make a nice professional solder joint. There we are, that doesn't need it. So there are the components in position. Is it going to work for us? This is the question. This is the question. Shall I give it a bit of a clean yet? No, let's just try it out, shall we? Let's not bother cleaning it. I know you like to see the action of my toothbrush on flux. But it's not that kind of film today. Uh, get in there. Right, so I'm plugging the keyboard membrane back in and I'm putting the lid loosely balanced over the top. Plug, plug in the power. And there we go, got a peep. Plug the simulation, battery simulation load back in. Oh, lovely. 
Okay, let's try again, see if she actually does anything this time. So it says 13.56, but actually the load is running at 12.398, it's less than 12.4 at the moment, which is a bit strange. But it's working evidently, I have fixed it. So that was a real non-interesting <laughs> repair. But yeah, you know, I've done someone a favour, hopefully they'll do someone else a favour, and anyone else that's got one of these would just know to look. And no probing or, well, a little bit of probing required, but I used my eyeballs and you could see that it was scarring on the resistor, so no prizes for this one, but I'll load it up and uh, if you didn't enjoy it, don't leave a dislike, just cut me a break and if you did like it, then uh, well, that's great, <laughs> come down there and subscribe and leave me a like for saving your battery charger, but that's it, she's done, I can't bother doing any more on this, so yeah, thanks for watching and uh, yeah, good luck with yours if you want to repair it.